Focus. Idea. Innovate. Enable. Stock Exchange of India has been actively involved with initiatives to educate the young generation of our country on the importance of financial management. One such initiative is NSE Finwill that focuses on educating and advising the young workforce of the country on wealth management to enhance financial literacy and to empower Insurance them. Insurance is for protection and investment is for growth. Another program facilitated by NSC IPFT is NSC Financial Quest. This inter-school financial quiz contest goes an extra mile by educating the young students on fundamentals of finance. On the buzzer, what is this? It's the formula for the simple interest. Simple interest is the right answer. Under the NSC Financial Quest Base Camps banner, the program engages students around the year through workshops on various topics, projects, interactive videos, and quizzes. We can prevent bouncing checks of Pan Am. Plus 75 on that. Plus 75. To facilitate these two programs, NSC, along with CNBC TV18, has traveled across the country to bridge the wide knowledge gap in terms of finance. In this episode of NSC Finwiz, we are all set to achieve our objectives once again by gauging young professionals in a new city. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV18. I'm your host Mridu Bhandari and today my team and I are in Hyderabad on the campus of a global pharmaceutical giant from India, Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. For an young professional, this environment not only is exciting, but also the uncertainty in their professional career is too strong. So it is high time the young professionals plan their personal finance to hedge their, uh, the professional risk they actually undergo. To me, this is a very crucial program for them, given their uh, overall environment and whether they can use this personal finance to mitigate whatever risk they have. On a short-term basis, uh, given the amount of risk that we take, uh, principal protection is something which is very important. But on a long-term, uh, the long-term ob objective uh, for me is uh, to have at least 5 to 7 percent higher real rate of returns uh, on a longer-term time frame. I'm not a very big fan of taking risks. So I would uh, choose the mid-way of, you know, having maybe 40 percent in the old conventional way and you know, because I'm young, I can take a little bit of risk and I'll put 60% of my finances in the modern way. I have a little inclination towards conventional, but my portfolio is more towards the modern uh, means of investing. And uh, if I would say then, I think about 80-85% of my portfolio is towards equity and there's, that's where I tend to be inclined towards. I have two questions to the NIC experts who are coming in today. So one is, uh, what is that must-do uh, investment plan that they would suggest for young, young employees like us? Uh, and the second one is uh, like how how is investing in the real estate look like now? Hello and welcome to season four of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV18. Today we are in the beautiful city of Hyderabad and we are on the campuses of pharma giant Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. A set of financial experts is all set to answer the questions of employees here. So let me begin by introducing them to you. Harshvardhan Rungta, CFP Rungta Securities, and Lovai Navlaki, founder of International Money Matters. Thanks for joining us on the show today, gentlemen. Um, first up, Harsh, let's talk a little bit about trends in India, especially concerning the youth. We are hardworking, we are smart people, we are good savers. Are we good multipliers of money as well? The thing is, the young people today are not able to emphasize or look beyond, say, probably 10 years from now. Right. And that trend is something which needs to be corrected. Okay. You need to put aside a certain portion of your income, which could be 20% to begin with. It should be about 20% of whatever you take should be set aside for investing into certain future goals of yours. Right. Whether you can see them or you can't see them. Okay. So if you, if you ask a 25-year-old to sit back and think about retirement, 
Now he's not going to give you a good look yeah. because <laughs> at 25 we were talking about and, and to a youngster, a, a person who's in the in 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 the current generation trying to think and talk about retirement. No, it doesn't fit into his scheme of things. But that is exactly where they need to start thinking about. So, Lovey, uh, a lot of youngsters think that you know I've just started working. Maybe first two three years, let me enjoy my income and then I'll start thinking about investing or saving money. Is that a right mindset to have? I think uh, that mindset is uh, is obviously the first thing that comes to mind that you know now I've got some money let me enjoy. Uh, it may be a good idea to start uh, and have a habit to to you know put aside some money as investment. Um, I'm not so sure whether you know we should tell people who've just started working saying put a certain percentage of money. Uh, it could be 500 rupees a month. It could be thousand rupees a month. Uh, but I think that it just that the habit needs to start. Right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about new age options, market linked options, and for people who are scared of the markets, what's your advice? The question is, as a, as a youngster today, what do I look at? What do I want? Hmm. So you need to be very careful that you do not even get swayed by what is happening around. You need to be grounded. You need to understand there is something called a portfolio uh, which you need to create and have an asset allocation. So that asset allocation will have a bit of everything depending on what your requirements are. So you start off with that attitude and then you keep modifying it based on how your life changes over the period of time. All right. And uh, so let's take a show of hands right now. How many of you invest in mutual funds? Quite a few there. And how many of you invest directly into equity markets? Quite a few there too. Great. So what's your advice to first time investors who are looking at equity markets because you know these can be very attractive to an outsider because you hear of so many people making so much money, losing so much money as well. But uh, what are the do's and don'ts for first-time investors? So uh, my personal take is that buying uh, equities uh, is almost like saying I'm going to bet on this one property in Jubilee Hills because that's going to do much better than that property in Gachipoli. Uh, but if I thought Hyderabad as a whole was going to be a good investment, right. then I want to buy a basket of uh, properties. Uh, obviously, if uh, I have, and let's assume that five years later, that one property does the best. If I had selected it, then great, then the stock investment is much better than the mutual fund, which is a pool. But otherwise, uh, you know, the risks involved uh, are much, much lesser. So not just first time investors, we tell even seasoned investors that if they want to play the stock market, then we treat it as exactly that, that's play, that's not counted in their corpus. We are not looking at it at all if they want to do it on their own. That's more the fun thing, I want to learn it on my own, that type of stuff. But when you do something like that, I think the best thing to do is to control the amount uh, that I can lose. Mm. So therefore I have the a minimum amount, so it's like going to the casino. But if I go in with only $100 or 100 rupees, then that's the maximum I can lose. Right. If I go in with 1 lakh rupees, I can lose all of it. So it's a question of deciding how much I can afford to lose and use that for stock market. And the rest, I think from a strategic long-term point of view, mutual funds certainly are better bet. All right. On that note, we're going to head into a short break. But on the other side, our experts are going to give us tips on how to invest in real estate. You're watching NSC Finviz on CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are in Hyderabad at the campus of Dr. Reddy's Laboratories, and the employees here have lots of questions for our financial experts. So let's uh, find out what the questions are, experts. My question is with respect to equity versus uh, mutual funds. And what you said is the best way to invest in equity is through mutual funds. If we uh, don't know much about equity market. So my question specifically is, when you say mutual funds, how do you select the most appropriate mutual fund? Do you need to have multiple mutual funds in your portfolio or it has to be like selected few? And the third question, do we go with the initial uh, mutual funds or which are already in market which have shown uh, recurring uh, return of investments? Okay. So how to track a good fund? How to really spot a good fund? So uh, 
I think that uh, it's very important to have a basket. Uh, don't pick only one mutual fund. Uh, it's important to have multiple. Uh, one way to do it is to uh, look up some of the more popular ratings uh, that appear in print on uh, online, etc. So I think Money Control has a list. Um, uh, some newspapers have a list. Crystal has a list. Mint has a list. So you can pick from there. Uh, not advisable to have too many. Uh, it frankly depends on the amount that you are putting aside. Uh, but having maybe anywhere between three to five equity funds is a good idea. Yes, you want to pick funds which have a track record. You are not making an investment in mutual fund equal to angel investing. So you don't want to figure out who is a new bright young kid in the on the block. This is hard earned money and you have some goals. So pick things which are with a track record. Uh, the other option is to, you know, work with an advisor and see what his thought process is. Because even the the ratings or the analysis that is done, you will find multiple rating agencies uh, having some difference of of rating for the same fund. And that's probably the reason. The reason for that is that the basis at, on which they select is different. And then you need to figure out which of them is more applicable for you. So an advisor might help. But these are some simple ways of uh, picking and choosing. My question is that uh, does SRP mean only putting in the money or in mutual funds at appropriate time? Is it uh, relevant to withdraw the money and reinvest when the market is uh, again down or we just take course and let the fund managers manage your money? So uh, when you are investing in a fund via SIP, that is a systematic investment plan, the underlying objective being that you do not want to time the market. And you cannot time the market. So the idea is if you've started an SIP in the year 2010 and you've been investing regularly every month till say 2017 now, suddenly you feel the markets are going to go down or they're going to go up either ways. And you said, now let's start timing it. The moment you withdraw out of it, your averaging has already gone for a toss. You've averaged it. So your average cost of acquisition has been from 2010 to 2017. If you, if you redeem it now, and if the markets go up, you're going to lose a lot of money. Suppose you redeem it now and the markets are going to go down. So are you also stopping your SIPs? You're not going to stop. Your further in introduction of money into the mutual fund. So the SIP, the purpose of underlying, purpose of investing in SIP is that you do not want to time the market. And if you do not want to time the market, then why are you getting into that exercise even after five years, maybe, for instance? So you continue with your SIPs. And when you're investing in an SI, through an SIP, you are investing a particular sum of money, but does not mean the fund manager is not trying to time the market. The fund manager is anyways making changes in his portfolio, depending on which company is expected to do well or not do well. So the fund manager is churning the portfolio any which case. You are investing a particular amount every month. And your entitlement in that fund is to the units that you are holding. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, audience, and thank you, experts. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of NSC FinViz on CNBC TV 18. Hope those insights and tips will really help you manage and grow your money better. Until next time, it's goodbye. So the event was very insightful and I'd say as a chemical engineer and you'd find a lot of engineers in this campus, uh, we really don't know much about our financial uh, investment plans. So it was really insightful and got a lot of knowledge. I think uh, a lot of... Uh Things that were not we were not aware of, those have uh, now really come into picture, uh, which has really helped me now relook at uh, my investment plan. They have exposed us to a lot of different avenues where you can invest your money and get more returns. So I think I'll go out there and think of better options now. Welcome back to NSC FinViz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are at Dr. Reddy's Laboratories in Hyderabad. And in this segment, our set of financial experts is all set to deep dive into today's core topic, that is real estate. So experts, first off, 
everyone has this question is it good to buy or rent in india as far as residences are concerned lobai would you like to start uh, so i have a very uh, diametrically opposite view of uh, as compared to india and i'm seeing the trend uh, beginning to happen it's probably just about beginning to happen in the past everybody felt that real estate was a great thing to do you know to own after i owned one i should have a second then a third what i am st- seeing the start of is the movement away from ownership to usership right uh, and people actually want to be free and not stuck with a particular location type of job uh, city they work in etc so i am seeing more and more people saying that really if i buy real estate i am forced to then live in that city mm. or i am forced to live closer to that area while i am my workplace is you know 40 kilometers away right. um and i i think that that's something that comes in the way and i think it's not just true of younger generation if i can take my own personal example i moved from a own residence to a rented residence just because the rented residence was a 10 minute walk to my office right uh, as opposed to a lottery of 35 minutes to 2 hours to drive to office and back mm. uh, and i i think i am i am so liberated in the last few months just on account of it's financially probably a bad decision uh, mm. in the sense that that place is still lying it's vacant i've not done anything with it trying to do something demonetization came in the way but uh, i think that it just changes the way you look at things um, uh, and i think that's a big change is what i see all right but purely from an investment perspective even if one was to not live in that house is it a good option to invest in real estate given the current market scenario well if you look at the current situation uh, most certainly not the reason being because uh, you know we've seen if you look at the data you know specific to real estate we know developers are sitting with a large amount of unsold inventory mm. and uh, newer constructions are just about happening i mean you have government coming out with incentives for affordable housing so you will see more construction coming into uh, play so more and more supply coming in demand weathering away with uh, because of the cost being one factor the other the mindset as lovai said that people are moving away from ownership thought now and they're more happy to rent out because it makes more financial sense also in case you're looking at only investments now in real estate you must realize unless you have made your money three times mm-hmm. you really not earned anything the reason being because you buy a real estate there are ta- the taxes to be paid on that there is a maintenance uh, you know if you if it's a pro, if it's an apartment then there is an society maintenance charges to be paid then there is renovation repairs that you need to get regularly done the rental yield that you get on a residential property is about 1 and 1/2 to 2% yeah so what have you actually earned at the end of the period so unless you sell your property for three times the value you've not really made money out of it right and even when you sell there is a taxation impact on that so if you look at it from that perspective does it really make good investment sense maybe not however if you've exhausted all other financial assets you've got equities you've got debt you've got precious metals and you're still left with a lot of money then maybe you could think about it okay. the problem as i see again is that people who start earning buying your own house is a sense of pride hmm. it's a sense of achievement maine apna ghar bana liya you know that kind of an attitude so probably there is where the problem starts and just when you're earning where well, you've begun to earn for yourself and if you take up an emi on your head yeah. you will realize that contribution towards emi sucks away all the liquidity that an individual has then right. you're left with no money to invest in any financial assets mm. so there is only one single asset that you will own for a considerable amount of time until your income goes up substantially right. so real estate in current environment i don't think so even from a financial standpoint i think if you first do away with all other requirements of financial assets your commodities your precious metals that we're talking about and then if you left with something maybe real estate would come in at that point in time all right okay so let's take up some questions uh, from the audience here the first one is from smita ramdas director uh, department uh, ipm um and her question is in hyderabad is it wise to invest in apartments i somehow feel that there's so much in supply in case of apartments um or would it be safer to invest in land yeah so uh, when it comes to real estate uh, if at all you can manage and you know secure your land land is still a better investment to make the reason being land is a natural resource so you will not have more land coming up 
but you can have more apartments coming on the same land mm. so when you say a piece of land there is a multiple that you can construct and that multiple is currently uh, controlled by the government so if, which is called an fsi right so for example if the government allows you to construct two times of the area of your land that's a two fsi so which means if your if your land is say a 1000 square foot you can construct 2000 square foot on that land mm. what stops the government from tomorrow going vertical and saying that you could construct 4000 square foot on the same so and a 4 fsi so the value of an apartment may get affected because of that but the value of land in that context will go up so land is certainly better but the, it comes with its own sense of uh, problems which is you need to make sure it is not encroached upon the titles are clear so if you can manage all that bit land is certainly a better investment than having an apartment and commercial versus uh, residential i mean return wise of course i'm sure commercial properties give you better returns but there is a lot of cost difference as well so when you weigh the two from an investment perspective what would you suggest lowey so commercial definitely gives you a better yield uh, the risk of course in both if you're making an investment and you are sort of letting it out is what happens when the tenant vacates uh, how quickly are you able to replace and whether you are able to maintain the same rent that you were getting from the old tenant so in commercial depending on again the size of the property it may take much longer if you have large piece of commercial uh, to get a tenant again so that's the risk uh, that's there uh, but i think otherwise i would imagine that commercial if you had the money is probably a better investment than a residential okay time for another quick break right now but on the other side our financial experts will be answering all the questions that employees have here at dr reddy's laboratories in hyderabad stay with us on cnbc tv 18